of it. Um, AI and associated challenges, I think Marikarjun and Rakesh spoke quite brilliantly about uh, posture management and we take, uh, you know, how, uh, you know, if AI takes over an enterprise, how does, you know, how does the chat GPT or general AI uh, can help you uh, leverage that. So thank you so much once again. Um, I hope everybody is here and we can see a lot, of, lot more people coming in, uh, which is fantastic. So, ladies and gentlemen, I think the moment has arrived now that we have so many people around uh, where we can officially inaugurate the best practices meet the 16th edition of BPM, so to speak, of 2024. And uh, this time around, I'd like to uh, leverage and ask for support. And you can see the agenda as well that we have multiple sub-summits, each designed to delve deep into very important, very critical tracks in cyber GCCs. We have one on quantum computing, we have third on the aerospace security, and we have the fourth sub-summit um, on digital finance security. So please stay tuned for that. We are set for an entire day of insightful conversations, innovative ideas, and impactful takeaways, right? The BPM is one of the leading technology-focused conferences in cybersecurity and has been facilitating a congregation of core technologists, practitioners, and users of security technologies. And continuing the tradition of theme-based deliberations, BPM 2024 will also deliberate, debate, and contest the ideas of security consolidation and innovation today and going forward. But before we proceed to the next bit, um, there are some key announcements since uh, if you are joining in the last 10, 15 minutes. So some important announcements as a delegate, and as a sponsor as well. So you can firstly catch all the BPM updates just like you had the last couple of uh, sessions. Um, you know, in impactful moments, you can have all the views on our Twitter page, dedicated Twitter page, at the rate DACI underscore connect. And we request you to tag us and share your feedback on the same using the hashtag BPM2024. We would also sincerely, once again, like to thank all our sponsors partners and exhibitors for their continued support. It's all not possible at all at this scale without their continued support. So the GCC sub-summit partner and diversity partner target corporation. Break down applause, please, if you can. The GCC sub-summit supporting partner, EY. Please. Keep it coming, keep it coming. Yeah, thank you so much. Uh, our workshop partner. Palo Alto Networks, we just had the kind folks, thank you so much. And a delegate back partner from SecPod, engagement partner, ThreatCorp, giveaway partner, we have two of them, which is Hadka Bana and Unreal Gifts, and a kind exhibitors that you can see in front of the Grand Ball Room, Third Eye Techno Solutions, LDRA, Privus Apian, and CISA. Great. A special announcement, uh, we have a very special leadership roundtable that is scheduled uh, for the day. For more details, you can contact Associate Director at DSCI, Mr. Sukrit Ghosh, uh, right across the DSCI booth. And for everybody else who think uh, or have not had breakfast, tea and coffee are available at all times, very important. And uh, please do not forget to join us um, for the cocktail networking dinner that starts at 7.30 p.m. And we also have, for all delegates, a multi-purpose kit bag. We will start distribution post the sub-summits, the four sub-summits as I mentioned. You can collect them at the delegate kit bag corner where you took your registration badge. All right, enough of announcements. Let's get the show on the road, right? Um, also, before we get into the welcome address, we would also remind everybody to uh, have all your uh, devices on silent, or if you want to speak for the rest of the people's convenience, you can take it outside all the conversations, right? May I now request, officially, Mr. Vinay Godse for his welcome address and set the tone for the event, sir. All yours. Thank you. <clears throat> so, 
the 16th edition of uh, best practices meet and i uh, talked about uh, history of best practices meet uh, is older than dsa got set up right and uh, some people in bangalore came together when it was getting information and a lot of discussion happened and there was a steering committee set up and jpm sir was part of that and some other people as well and that steering committee laid down the foundation of data security council of india and what it sees now right and we started in 2008 august actual operation in november 2008 and then after that we undertook some kind of a content aggregation work with the help of almost 30 people from the industry and we uh, as a part of that we published dsa security and privacy framework and from that i think a lot of things started happening that time we used to call it as information security but now we talk about cyber security after 2013 things got change a lot right what we do for information security largely was to protect our own interest asset and infrastructure but we story started realizing and there was a report that we published in 2013 it secure our cyber frontiers and first during that time i think cyber information security world got replaced as a cyber security so there are a lot of external drivers that shaped the things that you do in cyber security right uh, the ramification the security that could happen in one organization so that is not limited to organization's own boundary so it it creates ramification we have seen in july right mid july when this outage happened it has crippled out operations of some of the airports of the big operations across the globe right so the the impact on ramification of cyber security is much bigger than organizations remit and that's what the external driver ecosystems are coming in basically right and when we started seeing the regulatory actions those sectors which are strong regulators they started regulating their sectors and we have seen the maturity in those sectors especially banking sector now uh, other sectors like uh, sebi recently published a, a, a document on uh, our requirement document for the cyber resiliency framework for the capital sector uh, i already already had is basically so other sectors uh, i think security uh, started coming into their agenda they started looking security as one of the important area to govern and to improve the uh, baseline of the sectors and the regulatory ecosystem uh, now security is a very core part of it and now we started seeing same thing started happening at a uh, at a national level so uh, at a national level there is a architecture now for cyber security there is a national cyber security coordinators office there is a critical sector protection center ncipc which is for the critical sector security and there's a cert india we all most of us know about it ki their role is to uh, help with the uh, competition emergency and incident response kind of a thing and they also have a lot of powers and that powers is now used to uh, create some obligation but at the same time they help in a very crucial uh, juncture when probably you are got uh, hit by some of these attacks the team's effort becomes very important and then we we see uh, mha for that matter has a role to protect the country's information and company's critical information so they also have the nispg national information security policy guidelines and that guidelines is largely meant for the government organization and uh, public sector organization because uh, what happens in a department or a psus could create a larger issue and problem basically right and now we are seeing even ministry of power sometime back published a, a, a requirement Uh, for the power sector organization now we are seeing mopng which is a ministry of petroleum and natural gas is coming up with own requirement uh, gradually the individual ministry are now we are seeing that taking cyber security on agenda the way we have seen in terms of the uh, sectoral regulators like rbi sebi or irda basically right so now uh, it is a regulatory requirement but at the same time uh, it's also inherently organizations own critical internal driver also to secure it basically right but regulation adds lot of those uh, obligations and liabilities and because of compliance a lot of things started moving and one of the important part of movement that we see it's also uh, because the way the digitization happening in india especially the digital public infrastructure we talk about and the kind of footprint it has created a scale that is achieved basically so because of that i think the challenges are immense and so is the use cases basically so while there are challenges on of security challenges of compliances it also creates lot of possibilities for uh, security innovations and uh, 
uh, both from product side and services side as well. And that's why we see cybersecurity industry is growing in the country. And so we are almost now, uh, as per our estimate, we will be definitely publishing a report on this. It's cybersecurity industry of India stands around uh, 18 to 20 billion dollar. And that is growing almost 30 percent every every year. And this industry, when I talk about, I talk about uh, the Spain that we have uh, domestically, it's almost $6 billion last year, December 23 figure I'm talking about. Uh, it's also the services export uh, that we do. It's also the global GCC companies which are um, coming and setting up there. Initially, they started with setting up operations, services. Now, a lot of value-added services that they're providing out of India. Now, a lot of product development globally is also happening here. Some organizations are also doing product security work out of India, basically. Right? So this is a third important component of the industry. Um, then we have startup uh, uh, that our own Indian startups and now we have 400 plus product startups in the country and they definitely 50% of their revenue comes from domestic market but significant revenue is coming out of the uh, country as well. Almost 50% of the market is from the global geography. We see that uh, uh, in Middle East and US and many other areas quite a significant traction for Indian startup ecosystem. But in fact, after US, probably uh, US and the, uh, in Israel, India probably could stand as the third largest startup ecosystem in cybersecurity space, basically, right? And, and we see that significant tractions coming for the cybersecurity startup innovation ecosystem. And we see uh, cybersecurity has come to that inflection point this, especially this year or last year, basically, right? And we are talking about quite a big jump from now, right? So some of you must have been hearing about the stories and some narrations that we are trying to create for the country that by 2047, this nation has a possibility to becoming a developed nation, right? And uh, that's the goal we are putting together, right? So taking per capita income to a particular level, which will fall into the developed nation, end up a um, uh, category. And more importantly, because of that, 30 trillion plus kind of uh, India's economy and way it is growing now it is it is definitely going to that level the seven percent six to seven percent every year growth will take us to 30 trillion dollar kind of a uh, uh, economy by end of 2047 and we know at this point of time the 20 percent of that is a digital economy uh, next year it will be almost one trillion dollar digital economy and by the time we reach to 2047 almost 30 percent of that could become a digital economy so we are talking about almost nine to ten trillion dollar digital economy, and this economy uh, would have its own challenges, the scale and challenges as well. Right? The scale that we have seen, the kind of achievement that we had in a, a digital payment ecosystem, right? Uh, and that scale will be coming to almost every sector coming forward, right? Because we are trying to do same experimentation of DPI in the various different kind of a sector, right? We already started working on a um, Health sector, we are working on a uh, already travel track for the Digiatra. So, so many different sectors that we are trying to see. Ki, this could be one of the important way to digitize the overall economy. In fact, uh, United Nations, I had been uh, I visited the, their office in um, uh, Geneva. United Nations already had set up a group to define the DPI strategy per globe. So some of the learning, some of the narration that we are given to the global geography is the way we can digitize the economy, right? And that's DPI as a way to digitize economy. And probably the draft document is coming in month of September and they will be finalizing the strategy uh, from UN by end of December, basically. And that becomes a kind of mother document for many other countries who like to follow the way we achieve the digitization. And our digitization is very interesting phenomena, right? We brought down this high value, low, uh, high value, low value transaction ecosystem to low value, high value transaction ecosystem by using these interfaces like UPI and UID and many other sort of interfaces basically. And also made it very participatory. Who thought like Google and Facebook and Amazon could help us to Im initiate the financial transactions. These are social media companies, but they are into financial transaction processing in the country, like India, right? Uh, and then we have a lot of start, small startups, a lot of those new innovations which is coming in and that's what the uh, one of the important areas that we will be covering as a part of today's interaction is the digital finance and security of digital finance, how that will shaping. So until now, the kind of scale we achieved and kind of scale that we are looking at now. So last year, we pro uh, processed almost 120 billion number of transactions. This year, there's a plan to almost 
reaching it to two times more and sometimes uh, from now if we are looking at almost 300 billion plus transaction that country could process you know only financial side as well similarly we are doing experimentation in other areas as well like health area the food area is already agri stack the drone stack travel stack so all of this stack era which is coming in which is now trying to see the how the economic sectors are basically getting mobilized uh, to to bring those kind of benefits of digitization for the economy and by that mean then we make sure that the overall some of the goal of inclusion some of the goal of including the productivity of the economic asset some of the goal like a uh, enhancing the overall uh, uh, experience of the end user and customers and citizens basically so all of those are experimentation that are happening at a at a global national economy level basically right? and here uh, until now the experimentations are largely made with a organization which are in business of uh, processing transaction right mostly most of these experimentations with the banking insurance and many such kind of uh, type of organization which are processing transaction so there are there is lot of momentum that we see happening in the set of the economy which is industrial in nature so they are creating value like manufacturing sector oil energy sector and we see lot of momentum happening of digitization in those sector as well so as a overall country we are definitely creating those possibility creating the market for those kind of capabilities and in a way it is also helping to grow the cyber security industry in the country right so uh, currently it is 6 billion dollar in terms of spend but eventually it will grow quite significantly in coming 5 6 years of time and that will provide a lot of those opportunities basically right? and that's why and when we say this opportunity this opportunity until now we largely talk about cyber security talk about information security but opportunities are coming in domains as well it's very specific domain specific areas for example uh, this all the global capability centers that are getting set up in india and other part, in different cities of india are providing immense possibilities and opportunities for the uh, experts and professionals in cyber security right and uh, gcc and that's why we thought about let's dwell into we already have uh, uh, kind of cohort set up for the gcc and how the gcc are putting security operations here how they are scaling up the value that they bring to the table and the afternoon session will find all the deliberation how the gcc ecosystem the, all the global com com companies right from target to many other companies how they are building up the security capabilities in india how they are scaling up basically so the dwelling into that is one of the important thing that we will be doing in today's interaction basically i talk about digital finance so security of digital finance from now is very important with the scale that we have with the most of the finances would be very embedded into the most of the devices and in hardware systems and devices basically so what will happen in digital finance ecosystems we will dwell into that and and as we reach to the juncture where now threats from quantum computing is becoming very significant and that's why we need to dwell into that and that's why there is a session on the quantum uh, computing and that's why we will be dwelling too deeper into that and now aerospace because we are building space industry we are building defense industry so how do we make sure that we we imbibe security in those is uh, another level of interaction where a lot of air force officers are joining us today space industry joining us today to dwell into that so this is how we configure the best practices made top this year and while we uh, uh, had been doing that we also see this year especially and that's what the conversation that we started with this year is also very critical from the one is the ai and ai is definitely a uh, big elephant in the room and sometimes a uh, lot of technology discussion uh, limits us only to discuss about ai but if you look at this particular year and look at some of the announcement that government of india is making the effort that we are putting together a big bet that we are making on emerging technology quantum is definitely important thing there is national quantum mission and quantum is definitely changing a lot of the things will be coming in the future uh, so we should be mindful of quantum computing which is coming in eventually photonic computing there are a lot of breakthroughs happen in this photonic computing is coming uh, gradually the dna use of dna ecosystem for computing is coming so that will be important thing a uh, lot of such kind of technology innovation ecosystem robotics for that matter is becoming very important drones are becoming very important evs are becoming very important so the emerging tech uh, and the way the effort that we are putting together semiconductor ecosystem that we are talking about so all of these has larger uh, challenges for cyber security but they also help you to solve problem we just heard about 
how AI can help you to solve security problems, right? How can you use photonic computing to solve some of the problems? In fact, how can you leverage some of the DNA computing ecosystem which is being evolving to take care of some of the security issues? So there's a neuromorphic computing we talk about. Suddenly from now to next two, three years of time, we'll see three different kinds of computing. One is the neuron computing, so neuromorphic, so it's a brain-inspired computing. People are building circuitry based on the, how the brain works. Other is the quantum computing, which is the qubit computing we talk about. Qubit is the basic unit for processing the information. So that's the another qubit computing. And third is a bit computing, which is, will be still going on, at least for some time. Semiconductor computing will become still. So current, suddenly, there is a hybrid computing age, where you would have these three computing environment available to you. And depending on the workload, the workload can be sent to, uh, for example, there is a very high speed, high uh, 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 complex kind of a, uh, processing require, you will send it to quantum computing. For that matter. Something with deep learning, you will send it to interoffic computing. Something very conventional workload, you will send it to the bit computing, basically. And now people are building data centers, which can help you to manage this hybrid computing environment, basically. So when we are sitting at this juncture here, right, we need to be very mindful of what is going to happen as well in the next two, three years of time in terms of the way the emerging technology is evolving, basically, right? And these technologies are, um, in a way, uh, helping you with it. They're providing a lot of those capabilities, but they're also challenging you. And we discuss in terms of AIK what kind of challenges will throw us from the security perspective. Quantum will throw us quite a good significant challenges, basically. So the other technologies basically. So as a security professional, and we all have been investing our effort in terms of understanding day-to-day -day problems, solving day-to-day -day problems. We should be also investing some of our time to see what is going to happen from now. See what that means for security. See that what means for digitization. What is mean for this emerging tech? So we talk about the emerging tech. We talk about critical technology. We talk about supply chain security. We talk about geopolitics of technology. What that means to us as a security professional, basically, and then. Then everything is data. So what that means to us as a, as a privacy professional as well. So that's the exploration. That's the effort. That's the kind of a uh, uh, investigation that uh, we always try to do as a data security council of India. That's our job and role as well to contribute such kind of a uh, effort to a lot of the things that government of India does, and, and also community here get them uh, aware and more importantly learn from them as well. So and we we are seeing many of those kind of a possible sectors like a manufacturing sector for that matter kind of investment they're making for digitization for technology transformation uh, we are seeing now a lot of interesting experiments that are coming from this kind of ecosystem basically right? so when we do this kind of conversation our basic urge and request is one is to have that larger bigger understanding of current situation and more importantly how eye on what is going to happen for the next five six seven years of time basically and if you have some time, if you have some bandwidth, try to think of what could happen in 2047. Because that's where the entire country is thinking about it. So that's where the effort is being put together. For example, Niti Aayog recently set up something called the Frontier Technology uh, Hub. So what that is, uh, so it's like a, not uh, immediate. So there are a lot of initiatives of government of India, like DST takes, MIT takes, or many other ministry takes, which looks at what is happening now, what could happen from now, right? Uh, but there are some effort we need to put together what could happen 10 years from now, 15 years from now. So that's the function now NITI has set up. If we should have a very long-term vision in terms of what could happen in technology area and how could we prepare as a country. And now uh, we, are, we are one of the leading partner in that initiative as well. So see 10 years from now what could be the situation. See 15 years from now what could be the situation basically. And what that means to cyber security. What that means to... Uh, future of security basically, right? What that means to privacy basically. What kind of challenges that we'll be seeing for security personally? What kind of opportunities throws to us basically? So these are, the, in, these are the conversations and these are the efforts that we are putting together, but we also need contributions and inputs and critical uh, kind of a, uh, understanding at a local or ground level what you have been trying to do. So some of our effort, if you are able to spare to some of this kind of thing, and as the Security Council of India, we want to mobilize those efforts uh, so that we contribute to the uh, overall effort that country is making. And it's not made, made only for India, but it's made for the global market as well. Right? And we have proven in some areas, uh, for that matter, 
in payment industry, in space industry, in cyber security as well now. We have proven ourselves that we can create those pipeline of innovations which are very important and critical as well. And we also now understand some of these things require very fundamental core research and some of the things require applied uh, effort as well. And that's why we built quite a good network of the researchers in this country, almost 500 plus professors working in cyber security where we engage and understand their work uh, quite closely now. And uh, we also try to track from the emerging technology perspective to 4,000 plus professors work. So many different kind of effort that we put together and we try to see how all of them work together. There are still a lot of silos exist in this country. Whatever happened as a research work in academic institution and whatever happening in startup world, whatever happening in industry level, so these silos need to be broken. There should be some kind of conversion, conver uh, uh, conversions that we should try to bring together. And I believe that being part of this ecosystem, being part of this profession for that matter, cyber security, it's our duty uh, and probably responsibility as well to contribute to the some of the uh, thing which are futuristic in nature and that itself will uh, probably bring that you know, one of the important goal of this Vikasit Bharat is can we can we convert this service based uh, ecosystem in the country to more product based ecosystem basically can we uh, go to the paradigm where technology plays very important role can we can we be reason for some of the key breakthroughs that could happen in technology basically and there are some experiments in some pockets that we see in the country. How do we make sure that we all work together to scale that effort basically? So that's the effort we would like to put as a data security council of India, and that's a responsibility as well for all of us. But we are creating some kind of a uh, ways for, uh, for somebody like you want to engage on this matter, somebody like you want to contribute for some of this kind of effort basically. You want to set up some kind of this, uh, 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 this effort basically and Make sure that we all uh, really uh, have some time available to contribute to some of these things which will be will be evolved in the in the coming future. And we are designing some of those programs at the national level to make sure that we are uh, uh, active contributor. Every time it's not like we are just adopting things, but can there be some way for us to uh, create something which will be relevant to Indian market and global market as well? And we have reached to that juncture where. We can really contribute from that perspective. So, with this idea, I think uh, uh, we also, from the cyber security perspective, we also see a lot of uh, evaluation happening at a at a national level. We see, but we also see at a state level as well. Some time back, the state of Karnataka published or probably launched uh, their cyber security policy. We certainly want to dwell into that uh, policy because we have invited the uh, officer who is responsible develop this policy and probably operationalize that policy. We'll have that conversation uh, uh, sometime from now. Um, and till the time we probably, then what should we do? Yeah, so we uh, we would evolve on that, but as an overall effort that we do as a Red Security Council of India, so we also come up with a, a various different Kind of a research because that's one of the important thing that we do as a uh, uh, as a overall DSCI. So, and with the partner ecosystem that we have from the contribution that we have, so we uh, try to time the DSCI's event to publish on those reports basically. So I hand over to uh, uh, Shaurya to take this lunch. But thank you all for coming, and we hope to see you in the journey that we want to make from now. Thank you, Vinayak, sir. Uh, I'll, I'll request you to be on stage as well, uh, since, as he pointed out, that we'll have a very special launch. So, ladies and gentlemen, raise yourself. Thank you so much for firstly being here and uh, those who are joining in. Um, so, we have a very special launch, and it's uh, you know, taking cue from what Vinayak, sir, said about you know talking about conversions and conversations and how to you know, at least give back to the community as a whole. So, we have a joint DSCI and I value point of view paper. Uh, and the topic of uh, the, this paper is cybersecurity and data privacy for Indian businesses and talking about strategies and key insights. Uh, please, um, you know, please give a warm welcome to Mr. Mitesh Chitnavis, Chief Technology Officer of iValue. 
And we also have Ms. Neha Mishra from DSAI, please, to come up on stage. The report delves into a critical, uh, into critical area such as emerging cyber threats, India's Digital Personal Data Protection Act of 2023, um, and pragmatic compliance strategies. So if you can just go on and uh, yeah, make an official launch, then I accept. And Mr. Nitish, do the honors. Thank you so much. Round of applause then, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you all for the launching of the report. Uh, I would request uh, if you can just have the QR code, um, please, on, on the on the AD piece. So, yes, thank you so much. So, please, I would request all the audience members to scan the QR code if you haven't done already. That's on the screen to download the report. It's also available on the DSCI website. Also, now request Mr. Mitish to uh, from iValue will be sharing some insights of the report. All over to you, sir. Good morning. Good morning, everyone. So, thank you for being here. My name is Mitish. I'm Mitish Chitnavis, CTO for iValue. Uh, just a quick intro of iValue. We are a cybersecurity, bad value added distribution. We work with almost all partners and as well as customers. The idea that we thought privacy is important, considering the DPDPA Act that is coming in, and we said Indian businesses need to know in partnership with DSCI that how can we comply to the act as well as how can we start managing our privacy better. Privacy is right of every individual sitting here, whether you are working for an organization, where you are developing a software, where wherever you are, privacy is important. But if you go 25 years back, privacy, is, it was absolute luxury, right? And the best part of that was the, there was CNN, there was BBC, but also there was something called as NNN. And NNN used to be Neighborhood News Network, right? So at that point in time, NNN was super active. And whatever, if I have, I mean, if we are anywhere, we are within the system, we are within the complex, wherever we stay, that... Uh, NNN was super active. My mom would know firsthand where I would be, okay? Before even I would know where I was supposed to be, right? So that's where privacy was luxury. But considering the data that we have and we manage today, privacy is absolutely important. It has come a long way. We all understand privacy. Still, there is a lot of awareness that is needed. And we all still continue to uh, use a single login. For example, uh, we try and log into a website which always has a, you know, they say login with Google, login with Facebook, login with Apple, and so on and so forth, right? But we are actually logging into a food delivery app. And now we end up sharing that data cross border, everywhere, right? And that data is belongs to us. Do we uh, read the do, have we given the consent to do that? When we, it's an automated consent, right? So consent becomes absolutely, absolutely critical. So coming where we, we were 25 years back and now, we're looking at privacy as absolutely important. Privacy by design is going to be a key mantra for everybody who is developing and managing data. And that's where uh, GDPR, DPDPA, all those privacy acts that are coming in today they are all driving towards individual data and can that individual regulate that data for, for which
whichever service he is opting for. That's where this white paper actually talks about how can you comply because a lot of organizations deal with data, where that data sits, where that data is shared, where that data is located, it all becomes absolutely critical now. And mind you that when this act gets enacted, there are a lot of penalties as well. So it's important when we look at uh, data and how we are sharing data with the consent of the individual, can he um, say, I mean, I don't want this data anymore with you and so on and so forth. So uh, those things are going to be absolutely critical, identifying data, classifying data, protecting that data, implementing all the cybersecurity controls around that data is going to be absolutely, absolutely essential for all of us. And that's what actually this white paper talks about. So I'm not going to take much time, but I would request you to go through this paper. It will at least give you some guidance wherever it is needed and it will help you. In, and if you have any queries, concerns and so on and so forth, please do write to us and we will help you in uh, clarifying those doubts on the act and what's coming up. So you can write to DSCI, we are partnered with DSCI and we can always uh, work together to actually support you guys. So with that, Thank you. Thank you very much. Okay. And enjoy the evening.